Well, I'm out here in the desert about an hour south of Vernal, Utah. Tomorrow is supposed to be a new moon, so I thought I'd come out here and take advantage of the dark skies. This is a Bortle 2 area, um, and tonight's supposed to be really nice. It is a little bit breezy, but as you can see to the south, crystal clear skies for the most part. Uh, to the north, where Vernal is, about 60 miles north, um, it is clear too. But there's a uh, Vernal's at the base of the eastern Uintas, so we do have cloud systems that kind of flow through to the north, even when the skies are supposed to be clear. Sometimes that can affect polar alignment, and it was looking kind of stormy in the mountains this afternoon. So I think today was a good day to get south, get away from the mountains, and do some astrophotography. Not to mention my backyard in Vernal isn't exactly ideal. I have power lines and roof lines and trees and spotlights from the uh, LDS church across the street. So I do have uh, small patches of sky where, where I can image for a few hours, but I don't know if I'd ever be able to get away with an all night imaging session, maybe, maybe in the north, right around Polaris. So that's what I'm working with back home. Um, it's definitely nice to be out here without any type of obstructions whatsoever. And I'm planning on shooting uh, the Eagle Nebula um, with my nine and a quarter inch SCT. Hopefully everything goes, goes well with that. But I also brought my uh, 127 millimeter refractor just in case the SCT gives me trouble. So it's about 8 o'clock and sunset's about 8.50 this evening. We're just doing a quick inventory. We brought a whole bunch of crap down with us. So let's see what we got. Here we have the 9 and a quarter inch Celestron Edge SCT. We have the mount, the EQ6R Pro. We got a couple uh, photo tripods because we're planning on trying to do a Milky Way time lapse as well while we're down here. We got our uh, telescope tripod. We got a couple power banks. We got a we got a Z50 and a Z6, which we're gonna try to shoot a time lapse on. Z7's in the shop. Uh, we got the lantern, the weights. We have our guide scope and guide cam that we use to do our polar alignment. Uh, we have the QHY-168C in here. We got a small little star tracker in here for the time lapse. Uh, we brought the drone too. And we got the, the rock star because tonight's going to be a long night. So that's the White River behind me. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of in the shadows there. Uh, down there is uh, what's called the Book Cliffs. To the north of me is, is pretty much mostly uh, oil and gas fields. So southeast should be that away. Um, pretty clear, crystal clear. Hope it stays that way. And so we're gonna have our uh, time lapse probably set up here closer to the edge of the cliff. And we'll have the telescope further up there by the truck so so the time lapse won't get in the way of anything if I'm checking on it but hopefully everything works out tonight I've been struggling for the last couple months actually with astrophotography just 
with little things going wrong. So fingers crossed that the trip down here, the hour long trip was worth it. So we're pretty close to set up here. We just need to run our, our wires, but just wanted to go over the setup real quick. So we got, of course, the Celestron nine and a quarter inch SCT. We are using the Celestron 0.7 focal reducer. This is the first time I've used this. I've only had this scope out twice prior to tonight. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, how that goes. I think the, the backspacing should be the same with or without it. Uh, we have the Celestron off-axis guider with the ZWO ASI 174 mm. And this thing is a little tricky getting the, the spacing correct with this. The guide scope with the off-axis guider has to have the exact same spacing, pretty much, as the uh, imaging camera. So it's a little tricky getting it. I've, I've, I've had it dialed in before, but like I said, I haven't used this in probably a month or maybe more. So hopefully we don't run into any issues there. Uh, we just have a manual filter wheel, and I think we're going to use the Optolong l Enhance maybe the L Pro just to see how it does, but planning the, the L Enhance. And then the uh, QHY 168C one-shot color camera. Then up here you might notice I have another little guide scope and guide cam. And no, I'm not using this small little guide scope to try to guide this long focal range SCT. I'm using it for polar alignment because I use sharp cap to polar align and I don't even know if it would be possible with that small field of view through this camera or even using uh, the main imaging camera to polar align. I don't know if it would even be possible. I had trouble using this small sensor guide cam, this Mead LPI GM with a 400 millimeter guide scope. I had trouble polar aligning with that because the field of view was too small so I had to uh, get this 174 uh, mm which has a bigger sensor than this to use for both uh, the off-axis guider here and for the 400 millimeter guide scope that I use on my big refractor so that's why I got this small little uh, guide scope on here it's just for polar alignment and then I don't know if I pulled it off after I did my polar alignment last time I mean I guess I could I don't know, we'll see uh, how the balancing goes, I guess. Ran into a small issue with, with balance and declin declination. So we have this 0.7 focal reducer, and it's pretty dang heavy. It's a big chunk of metal and glass. So this this is it right there. I mean, that's, that's heavy duty. So that added on quite a bit of weight on the back end. You can see on our dovetail, we are all the way forward, or all the way to the back of it. And this is what I do for balance weight on the front. I use my um, tube rings for my 400 millimeter guide scope, and I uh, clamp them, clamp them on to the dovetail here at the front. And today with the focal reducer, I actually had to add on even more weight. This is a magnetic one pound weight made by Farpoint and it'll stick to steel tubes like my Newtonian, but I guess this isn't steel. It's probably aluminum, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, I don't know if it would stick up here or I'm guessing this dovetails aluminum too. So it, the magnets don't work on anything here. So I have it basically zip tied with these Velcro zip ties to one of the tube rings. And I guess it's fairly stable. Um, it balanced a little front heavy actually, but I think it'll be okay. Uh, and you can hear it, the, it's got like little pellet BBs inside of it. <laughs> when when the scope is turned a different, a certain way, you can hear them. Um, you know, moving around in there, which is a little disconcerting, but I think it'll be all right. So then we have over here, I don't know if you can see way out there on the edge of the 
cliff we have a camera set up for a time lapse Milky Way time lapse um, but I think we're I think we're doing good 10 after 10 after 9 almost time for polar alignment the one last thing that I'm worried about is making sure we're close enough to um, align close enough to the uh, North Celestial Pole right now and hopefully I don't have to <laughs> pick up this rig and and rotate it I've had to do that a couple times I mean I used uh, the compass on my phone to get lined up but not always accurate so and then hopefully we don't have any focus issues with the uh, off-axis guider but that's it for now.